that's really important. I want to give some context to is Jerry Katina, who was a powerhouse and is a guy that not only was very powerful within the cause of Nostrum, within the Genovese family in New Jersey, but also invested his money. And he also used that money to build a huge amount of wealth, became powerful. And I think it's part of the reason why the Genovese were so strong in New Jersey. Then you have Bobby Manna, who kind of followed up after Jerry Katina's legacy. So when he was going to allegedly uh, clip John Gotti, obviously the, the government took it serious, and obviously um, um, that they, they convicted him. But there are some people that believe, and somebody wrote earlier, that there may be some conspiracy to it. Joe, are you familiar with the Bobby Man in the case? A little bit. Like what, what he went to jail for? Yeah, so for obviously yeah. for... Yeah. for uh, you know, convicted. They of had the bug in the bathroom. Correct. In the correct. restaurant in Hoboken. Correct. And then what's interesting is, so he's um, been behind bars for God for like over 30 years. And he tried to get released. He couldn't. A and then he, tried, then, then he tried to get released again. And then I recently got denied. So at 91 years old, there's obviously certain death. Um, why is it that, you know, with the first step back, with um, COVID restrictions and so forth. Why do you guys think that, you know, there's guys going on the street left and right, but somebody who served 30 years at 91 years old, who probably just wants to die with his grandkids, can't get out of jail. Tom, you go first. It's a vendetta, man. It's just the way it's been since the beginning of time. They just push the envelope with, I don't want to say Italian. I don't want to say discriminatory, but that. Yeah, but, yeah, but if that's the case though, there was an agent that, um, the actual charges were for conspiracy to kill John Gotti. Those are the actual charges that he was convicted of. But here's the thing, though. There was a, um, and again, it could be a disgruntled agent. You know, you don't always just believe one agent. But there's an agent that came out that said back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if you had a case, and you need resources, right? You need money. Um, you need um, men. And you need, you need resources, right? Um, long story short, um, if you put the name mob and he threw an Italian in there, the money flowed. And then what do you do? You do this so you get promoted, right? Where do we kind of say, hey, you know what? Like, raise our hands and be like, look at this, even the legacy stuff, and say, you know what? Like, this is discriminatory. Because if it was any other racial group, per se, people would be up in arms, you know? The 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 treatment once, once in the system is discriminatory. The charges are the charges. Correct. I think that goes everywhere. I don't think that changes much. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the treatment is discriminatory. I mean, is that the right word? I don't know. Is that yeah. the right word? Yeah, yeah. That's right what word. was he convicted of? He was convicted uh, conspiracy. of yeah, conspiracy to commit murder. Commit a crime. The crime was not committed. The conversation yeah. was held. Right. And that's mm -hmm. also, you know, that's that's like circumstantial evidence, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a room. The three of us are just having a pizza at a pizzeria, right? There's a high-end meeting going on in the back that we have no idea about. We can definitely be charged, charged or investigated yeah. for uh, circumstantial. So Crazy. I, uh, yeah, Joe. So watch. So Joe, you're you're a wise guy, right? Let's so you're a made guy, and and Tommy owns his ice cream shop, right? And Tommy owes me 500 bucks. Now, you don't leave the car. I said, Joe, I'm going to get us some ice cream. I go to the car and I say, hey, 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 Tommy, Joe Baith is in the car. He's a made man with the Columbos. And you know what? I think you kind of got to pay me, right? By me pointing to the car and you not only even just sitting there, not even knowing what I'm saying, but I'm you're using your likeness. I'm using your statue as a an inducted member calls in Austria, mm -hmm. we can get 20 years for enterprise racketeering and just for that. And right. Yeah. And those how laws, often does that happen? All the time. Because the time. I see, I don't, because I know from just past cases, you know, like, you, you know, you're facing 400 years, but they'll give you 15. I mean, how real is it that they actually well, give you in federal, federal, they give you not just football numbers, but they give you three-digit lottery numbers and not care. The whole idea um, 
is the whole idea is to just literally um, knock out of the box, right? And what's interesting in this particular case, and, and Mob Fireside chat is on. If you could just um, go ahead and please uh, put some comments in, because I know you know the case really, really well. Is um, what's different is there's other people that have gotten releases, right? That have yeah. gotten releases. For lesser charges, for lesser crimes, for lesser sentences, or harder sentences and harder crimes. But Bobby Manna, for some reason, the judge wasn't fighting. Priors. Yep. Priors, yep. obviously. They know he's a career criminal, evidently. You know, I'm sure there's priors that go back to we were in diapers, if that. You know what I mean? In Vincent the Chin. Yeah. He was his guy, so maybe they Who's hate that? that guy still. The uh, the last one I saw that got a compassionate release was Frank Polizzi. Christy Tick, they gave him, they let him out too. Chris Finari. Well, Frank Polizzi had um had uh, cancer, correct? Yes, but he lived for seven years after he, after he got Who's out. Frank Polizzi? The Cavalcante captain. Oh, in that's something completely different. I'm talking about like Bobby Manor was like with Chin, so. Okay. Yeah. He was he's a I'm te they link him to Chin. Yeah, that's it, right? And I think that has something to do with it. But they did let Chris Fernari out of the commission case. Yeah. He's from Staten Island. They released him to Staten Island. He was wow. in his mid nineties, whatever. He lasted about a year or two. But um They got a thing against Bobby. I don't know. But well, you know what else? There's one yeah. other thing though. It's what the person does while he's in jail, too. Who knows what Bobby Manor, who knows if he, he might have still been active as far as, you know, communicating with people on the street. You got to take that into consideration, too. Yeah. You know, some guys that go away, a, a, a high-level wise guy, Yeah, he's probably still has rackets going on in the street. I'm not saying he did, but could that play into it, maybe? Who knows? Well, so watch the gambling charge, which is also bogus, prevented from getting parole. So here's, I think it's called a, if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not a lawyer. They call it a predicate act. So what happens is. So, 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 it's my so, ringtone. The so ringtone is called Murder After Midnight by the Ghetto Boys. So, Ghetto Boys so, are good. It's the, the ghetto was a great. Yep. <laughs> nah, 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 right, my so mind's yeah. playing tricks on me. My exactly. You know the ghetto boys, right? Exactly. That's a good so, boy. Yeah. so we're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be a mob channel that is actually gonna talk about the mob. So anyway, so the gambling <laughs> chart bogus is what prevented them from getting paroled. Uh, and and again, so what what they do is they want to build a body of work, right? Defends overdo things. That's why they have a ninety six percent success rate in terms of convictions, right? So they'll say, you know, not only was he the underboss and not only was he capable of killing somebody and all these different things, but he's a career criminal and they'll take other things or predicate acts. Right. And what, yeah, yeah. and what he's capable of and what he's capable of ordering and what he's capable of doing. I guess so. He can control a lot of things, right? Well, he so can, watch. Yeah. He could push the button, right? So the government claims at 79 years old, the Shishio. Uh, and 92 year old man are still a dangerous society and committed uh, egregious crime. So, this is what I don't get. If he did it, would he, would... I'm a popular fucking guy. What could I say? Everybody's got my number. Put on silence. Uh, so where's Vinny? Uh, he's got to he's, he's come on shortly. So, that's him calling me right now. He's a juke. He doesn't see me on the screen. Oh, tell, tell, him, tell him the link. So, um, government claims that a 79 year old again, egregious acts. But the yeah. act wasn't committed. Exactly. So that's the part I don't understand. So was he convicted on a conspiracy? To yes. Commit that, murder? yes. Conspiracy. Yes. Like, what was the charge? I don't even remember. It's so long ago. Conspiracy. Con cons I know. I got charged with conspiracy also. I'm not doing 30 years. I did under a year. But, you know, but he has history, right? Yeah, but what about what about the ability to reform, right? If you have, and it's, it's going to be laughable, but if we have a, a a system that's meant to rehabilitate, right, people to. Re